All right then, so now we have a grid. It's showing in the browser, but there's no letters or words on the grid yet, so it's pretty useless as it is. So ideally what we want to do now is get our guesses array, and we want to cycle through it so that we can output each past guess onto a row in the grid. And that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. So remember, we have access to that guesses array right here in the grid component. And that guesses array is always going to have a length of six. Now those six elements are going to be made up of a combination of undefined elements, which is what they were initially set to and past guesses. Because whenever a user submits a guess, we format the guess and we add it to this guesses array where it kind of overwrites one of the undefined values for that particular turn. Okay. So as we map through the guesses right here and output a single row component for each guess, we get access to each guess as well, which we're calling G. And like I said, that guess, that G value is going to be a past formatted guess or undefined, depending on how many guesses we've made so far. And what I'm going to do is pass that guess into the row as a prop. So let's call the prop guess and pass G in as the value. And then we can accept the guess prop in the row component so that we can use it. So let's do that as well. Just destructure it from the props directly in the parentheses. So now we have access to this guess prop in here. And it's going to either be a past guess or undefined if that particular guess hasn't been made yet. So what we want to do is check the value of this guess prop. And if it has a value and it's not undefined, then we want to take that guess value, cycle through the letter objects inside it and output them into a row. And if it doesn't have a value, then we just output an empty row like we have down here instead. So let's do this little check then. I'm going to say up here, if guess, then we'll do something. Now, if guess is undefined, then this is going to be false here. It's going to ignore this code block and just return this empty row. So for any undefined guess in the array, we're just getting an empty row, which makes sense. But if guess does have a value, then I want to return a different template. So we'll say right here, return and then parentheses to output a template. Now we're going to have a div right here, which is going to have a class name of row because we also want to style it like the other rows down here because they're still going to be squares. But this time, it's also going to have a class of past, just in case we need to style this past row any different. So inside this row, we still want to output five squares, right? And this time, we want to take the letter of each letter in the guess and output it in one of those squares. So we're going to map through the guess. Remember, the guess is a formatted array, a formatted guess. It's an array of letter objects, so we can map through that array. So we're going to take the guess and we're going to map through it like so. And inside here, we pass a function to return a bit of template in parentheses for each item in that array, for each letter. Now we also get access to the letter and the index of that letter in the guess array as well. Now for each one, for each letter, like I said, we want to output a div. So let's grab that and place a div over here. Now, each one needs a key prop since we're mapping here, and the key is just going to be the index. And then we want to output the letter inside this div, so curly braces, and then we can take L, which is the letter object, and then remember, it has a key prop on it. If we go to the use Wordle hook, we can see that it has a key prop. That's the actual letter, and also a color property as well. So we can use that in a second as well to colorize this square. But for now, we'll say L.key to get the actual letter. And we're going to output that inside the div. Now we're going to use the color property as well to colorize this. And the way we're going to do this is by giving it a class name. So class name is equal to something dynamic in curly braces. And it's going to be the letter object and then dot color. So remember, that's going to be green or yellow or gray. So it's going to have a class name of green, yellow or gray, dependent on the color of that particular letter in the guess. And then we can use those classes in our CSS to style them. But that's pretty much all we need to do for this template right here. So now for each row, as we pass in the current guess, if it has a value, then we return a row with the letters of that guess output in each square. If it doesn't have a value, then we output an empty row. Okay, does that make sense? So if we've made two guesses so far, then this is going to fire twice, one for each guess, and we're going to output two rows where the guess is visible. And then the rest of them are going to be empty rows. Okay. 
All right then, so now let's head to the index.css. In fact, what we'll do is we'll preview this first of all, and then we'll style things up. All right then, so we can see an empty grid to begin with, and the solution word right here is bling. So what I'm gonna do is just enter in a guess, which doesn't match, and it can be something like bales. Now we don't see that word in the grid as we type because we've not submitted it yet. It's not become a past guess yet. But when I press enter now, and it does become a past guess, we can see that update down here in the console, but we can also see that word over here. And if we inspect some of these different squares, we can see they have different classes. Green, because that's in the correct position. Gray, for not in the word. Yellow, for being in the word, but in the incorrect position. And then gray for these two as well. So we can style those shortly. Now, if I say bling and then press enter and add that to it, now we can see that in the grid as well. And if we take a look down here, we should see that all of these are green because every single letter is correct. So we can style these classes now in the CSS to make this look a bit better. All right, so inside the index.css file, I'm just gonna paste in a few styles from my repo. Remember, you can get that from the link down below. And we just have three different selectors right here. We have one for any div with a class of green inside a row. We have one for any div with a class of gray inside a row, and one for divs with a class of yellow inside a row. And all we're doing is coloring the background of each div, either green, gray, or yellow, and the border color, green, gray, and yellow. Okay, that's all we're doing. Remember, we have a border right here and we want that to be colorized too. That's why we're coloring the border as well as the background. So I think that's pretty much all we need to do for now. I'm gonna save this and preview it again in the browser. All right then, so same again, empty grid, cause is the solution word. I'm gonna type in a word and press enter. And we can see now these are styled correctly. We're gonna make the text white later out so that it stands out, but we'll do that when we start to come to the animations of the tiles. For now, this is fine. But we can see that the C is green because it's in the correct position. R is yellow because it's in the word, but in the wrong position. Gray for these two and then green for the S. So this is working. And if I do everything correctly, let's do cause like so, you can see they're all green. So now we're successfully outputting the past guesses in the grid. Now what I'd like to do is output the current guess in the grid as I'm typing a word, because at the minute as I type, I see output up here, but it's not outputting in this row on the grid. So we're gonna tackle that next.